Today on The Grave Talks, Demonic Control, a conversation with Peter James Dowling. Just how much influence do demons have in our world? What avenues do dark spirits use to influence adults and children alike? Today, we have an in-depth discussion with demonologist Peter James Dowling about the realm of the demonic, how it works, what they want, and how to protect ourselves from falling victim to demonic entities. Simply, the realm of the demonic, at first at one time, these were just regular angels. They were God's favorite angels. Um, in religious texts, it talks about um, God, uh, Lucifer, matter of fact, was um, God's favorite angel. And uh, what happened was God created man. And when God created man, Lucifer um, didn't want to worship man, didn't want to serve man. Um, this is what angels usually do. Um, they love God with all their hearts, but they also love man, and they're here to serve us, um, to protect us from evil and sometimes from ourselves. Um, this is what um, I've read through and studied about them. Um, what happens is, is Lucifer and many other angels says, we're not going to do that. Why do I have to worship man? Why do I have to serve man? I'm not going to serve man. No way, you know? And they felt like they were a God and they were full of pride. And uh, so therefore there was a war in heaven between God, his angels, and the angels that uh, stood up against God. Uh, the angels, God kicked Lucifer out of the dimension of what we know as paradise in heaven. Kicked them out, all right? Banished them and stripped away certain powers from them. And that's why a lot of these demonic entities, their natural forms, are hideous. Uh, what happened after that, basically put in a nutshell, uh, they had nowhere to go except Earth. So they came to Earth. Their realm is on this Earth. They rule the world here, okay? And uh, since Adam and Eve, from what um, the, literature, the literature and all the things that are written about it, um, you know, once the uh, man had fallen, um, of course, it was they, the religious texts talked about Lucifer. Um, you know, bite of the fruit and pass it along and then man sinned. And then, um, you know, they went against God. And when they went against God, of course, we uh, were punished for it. And now it's been a competition. Um, Lucifer and the demonic entities, which are the fallen angels, have been since day one going to from the face of the earth to see who they can devour, who they can destroy. Because they hate God, they hate man's create, you know, the creation from God, and this is what they do. And, and up to this day, they've been trying to possess, they've been trying to destroy, they've been trying to uh, fool people and lie, and they can perform miracles. They can come to you in the middle of the night, pretending that they are an angel of light, and deceive you. Um, as a demonologist and people the, of the cloth, exorcists and what have you, we are trained and we have knowledge of the trickeries and the lies that they do. And uh, we know what to look out for um, to know if it's a regular angel or it's a demonic entity. And usually our chemistry in our bodies can pick these things up if we're at a location that has a, a demonic infestation or oppression in there. So that's how we know. Uh, so, so the realm is here on this earth and it will continue to do so until the war is over. When you think of something demonic, uh, oftentimes 
what comes to mind is, is this is something that, that came from, from hell or something like that. That's, that's what, what I think a lot of us who are brought up in any sort of, of Christianity or anything like that, uh, with that sort of theology would, would come to mind. But when they're mm-hmm. here and, and they're, they're banished to earth based on, on the theology and the texts of, of Christianity, uh, mm-hmm. putting them and on Judaism uh, as well, and Judaism as well, putting them on earth, what what almost comes to mind is 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 earth is earth a version of hell yes i believe so i believe so because i believe now michio kaku is our leading american physicist and mm-hmm. he has proven mathematically and scientifically that there are many dimensions out there okay okay and what we see here on this earth is third dimension okay mm-hmm. now on the other side you can see four dimensions there's you know four dimensional to to me and to many people, this is not our home. We're in this body of flesh and our other life when we pass on. That is our real home. We came from there and we'll, we will return. Some will say we were created by God and we will return to God. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can look at it in many different ways. Um, however, the re, the the theory on the ghost aspect is when people pass away, they don't want to cross over. They don't want to go into the light. They have a, they're attached to something here that's keeping them behind. Because through the years of my experiences in ghost hunting um, and dealing with the paranormal, there are ghosts, but there's other entities as well that are. N- uh, you have non-earthbound entities because we classify things. We classify them as earthbound mm-hmm. and non-earthbound, intelligent or residual. Uh, intelligent, they will answer, they will respond uh, to your EVPs or your spirit box or your questions or taking a photo when we ask them to show up for the camera. And I have been having pretty good luck with them showing up in my camera. Yeah. Um, I I sent you some pictures there of our last investigation. I saw um, those. Yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to say I, I I did see those, and and you have been <laughs> you have been getting quite a, a few interesting shots, uh, you know, a, a, as of late with with what you've been uh, investigating. Let me ask you this on on, and I'm 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 just uh, <laughs> I'll use the term loosely. I'm not trying to make a pun. I'll play devil's advocate, uh, but I'm just okay. I'm, I'm wanting to throw these questions out there to someone with your knowledge and experience because some of these are questions that I think our listeners probably have, and they're certainly questions that have run through my mind just over time and never really had anyone to ask. Um, when we're talking about the the theology of of angels and demons and the uh, the the concept of of the angels turning against God and then being banished and and sent to earth when when we have this mindset of 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 God being all powerful, all knowing, uh, the the creator of things, how is it, why is it that these angels were able to, to turn? Were they given free will and a choice to stay or go? Or or what what would that be? Because one would, would, would assume if you were God or I were God and I were creating these beings to serve me and, and help me that I would be creating something that, that doesn't have that option, that doesn't have the switch to go and say, nope, I don't want to keep going down your road. Uh, and, and obviously this is based on, on the text of what, what is out there. But I'm curious, you know, what does that say and what is your opinion on it uh, for, for that to have been able to occur? Angels and the demonic as well, uh, they both have a free will, okay? Um, In heaven, when the war started, they both had free will, and there was division. And same thing with us. We have a free will. And through this free will, we make choices. Now, we are influenced from the other side. We are influenced um, by the demonic as well as angelic realm from heaven, from God, all right? And then we have to make choices in our everyday lives. 
Uh, and you know what? Here is it's like this with everyday life. We uh, make a decision, right or wrong, and we have to suffer the consequences from it. You can make it uh, a learning experience, or you can we can make it um, a punishment, uh, if you want to call it that. But uh, we all, uh, my opinion, we're put on this earth to learn lessons. This is like one big school for us, for our spiritual growth. Um, that's how I look at it, uh, to better ourselves, to improve, to learn new things, you know, and Believe me, I'm wrong an awful lot, and I've, I'm, I'm, I think I'm the master of making bad decisions in my life, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, I've always been, um, last time I was interviewed, I, I said, if you tell me to go left, I'll go right. If you tell me to do this, I'll do that. I've always been some sort of a rebel, and when I grew up as a child, um, you know, everyone that I knew did not believe in ghosts. Everything was from the devil, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was complete taboo. And I went the opposite because the only way we're going to find answers to the paranormal or anything like that, or even in life, is we have to go full force, full fledged force into the subject. And it's very scary sometimes. And sometimes, Tony, uh, 35 years of doing this, sometimes I get scared, but I just don't run anymore. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, um, so, I mean, I don't know everything. I'm not a professional. Um, uh, I'm not an expert in this field at all, but I'm always learning. And I can only talk, we, we can only talk about my experiences. Mm -hmm. And I'm not on any type of medication. <laughs> um, I don't have a psychiatrist or anything. Maybe I need one. I don't know. They help. But, uh, I'll tell you that much. They help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But now we have psychiatrists in the field as well and psychologists um, who are open. Uh, the parapsychology and psychology part aspects of it, they're more working together now because they're finding things that sometimes the counseling and the medication isn't working anymore. Mm -hmm. So they're more open to the parapsychology aspects of uh, the field. And I have spoken to um, psychologists as well as psychiatrists, and I had positive responses when I talked about uh, demonology um, and paranormal investigation, the paranormal. Uh, where back in the old days, of the 70s, that was, they were, they didn't want to hear it. They thought you were crazy if you believed in such things. Sure. So it's getting better. <laughs> what, are there still uh, angels making the choice to, to go dark, if you will? Are there still new demons being created? Or, or has there been a set amount for X amount of time since this warfare took place and that's that's what there is. Are they still making free will choices to join the dark side, if you will? If From everything that I've read um, through theology and the metaphysical side, no, they're not being created. They're not deciding to take one side or another. The war is over there, but okay. now the war is over man, men's souls, uh, and it's a fight to the finish. Um, okay. And it's for a certain amount of time. I don't know how long. Mm -hmm. um, the Many scriptures state that um, in the end, okay, um, Lucifer will be defeated. It'll be done. The, the, the dead will be raised, um, and man will ascend with them and we will be judged um and we will be judged according to our own hearts um because god judges those from people's hearts he doesn't judge people for their actions where man judges people for their actions and the words that they use so um god judges us differently um we all got to test for our lives, and many people have crossed over. Now, we're going to go to NDEs. We're going to talk a little bit about that. A lot of times people go up through a tunnel or they, they look above their bodies. They cross over. Sometimes they cross over, but it, they get a whole life review in front of them, and they can feel the emotions of what others felt when they were hurt. 
um, or they were happy or what have you. And then we become judges of ourselves also, you know, and um, that can de- either condemns us or brings us into paradise. So this is what the lit the, the scriptures that I've read and, and also Judaism, it also talks very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also um, look at other beliefs um, and th- there's a lot of similarities. So that's why there shouldn't yeah. be, a re- you know, wars on the theology or the metaphysical side we we should all be looking for the things that we have in common yeah and that's like in everyday life it's literally the next question i have for you because i as we talk i make up my questions in the middle of our conversation uh just because it's like okay this is where this is going and, and i have a question about this and a question about that and so one of them i wrote down just a moment ago was what other similarities uh does this story does this theology uh of of the angels having this fight and then they're being good and they're being evil and the banishment to this earth. Uh, obviously we know that's in Christianity and Judaism, but uh, is that story is, is that idea shared in other religions uh, and theologies as well? Yes. Um, I, I've been looking over at the demonic side, being a demonologist, unfor- you know, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, um, the Japanese has demons. Japan, they have their own demons um, and, and their Buddha beliefs and what have you. And there is a lot in common with the demonic and the names. Um, there are um, ancient, ty- ancient Babylonian words, and we have modern words which are very similar uh, Japanese might uh, have a different name, but uh, when they're talking about a, an, an angel, um, it will have the same description, but just a different name. So it's all connected in, yeah. in, its, uh, in different beliefs. If, um, we have to look at the similarities, and we look at the similarities, and they just have a different name. Um, like, let's say, in the Christian Bible and the the uh the jewish text noah um had a you know built an ark and had these angels as so they say and uh and i believe that and uh then you go to different religions and beliefs including the native american belief that everyone all the animals and uh one family got in a canoe if you want to look at the native american aspect um, it's all recorded that one time there was a giant flood. Mm-hmm. All right. And the word has been either written or has been spoken from generation to generation to generation. Yeah. That, that's what I find so, so in, interesting about about religion in, in, in general is the amount of translations that have gone on. The amount mm-hmm. of, of political translations that have gone on to serve specific places and times and then never really mm-hmm. gone back to look at original text, uh, you know, in, in mass form to go, um, yeah, they kind of screwed that part up because of some <laughs> yeah. some governmental reason of the day. And, and, right. th- and then you have Things. then you have groups of people just you know weaponizing pieces of religion uh for their own belief systems and then plenty who just don't understand or know that they can dig deeper and say wait a second maybe this wasn't translated right um and maybe right. these things because be- you have greek and hebrew yeah. and you have all other different languages yeah i mean it, 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 it's just it, it's amazing to me and and, and it, it, it to me it it doesn't necessarily close a door on anything or or reject religion as a whole or anything of that nature to me it just it opens up more possibilities it opens up in fact it, it's it, if you look way way back in many of the things that, as far as what my knowledge is and it's not super great but i I'm, i enjoy this topic and it's interesting to me uh it's far more inclusive than it is uh, exclusive, it seems, in many cases, uh, compared to what you would have in some organized religions modern today that, that would exclude certain groups of people for this or that. Uh, and it's, it's just yeah. shocking to me that, that nobody's just gone back and said, look, we screwed up. We've been saying the wrong thing for a long time. This didn't mean that. And we're sorry. You know, but it's, it's, it doesn't seem to go that way. When it comes, All right. when, well, what, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, uh, well, thing, what I would like to say yeah. 
All right. It doesn't matter if I go to a synagogue or I go to a church, regular Methodist church, or I go to a Catholic church, or if I go to a mosque or, or what have you. It became after a while that really, uh, through the years, religion has been corrupted. Of course, you know, the demonic will infiltrate anything that's good. They will infiltrate the churches. They will infiltrate the synagogue. They will infiltrate um, the mosque. Okay, and they will divide these re- religions and these churches and what have you, and people will become divided. <laughs> but also, too, through the years, man has used religious texts for their own control, <laughs> uh, controlling other people, putting fear in people's hearts and everything else. Okay, and that's not what God wanted. And after a while, okay, I was raised Methodist. And uh, but then it was like it was boring to me. I didn't want to go to church. I didn't want anything about that. I'm more scientific. I want to see things. Yeah. And after a while, um, you know, uh, after a while, it became personal to me that I was starting to seek spirituality. Mm-hmm. You see, religions for people who don't want to go to hell. Spirituality is for people who have been there and don't want to return. And that's me. That's a very good way of putting it. I, I, I find that very to be very, very so, accurate. So, so I will go to a. I, I was confirmed by a Catholic church, and I'm not Catholic, mm-hmm. but I work with the Catholics. Sure. All right, and I respect their beliefs, and they respect mine, and we have so much in common mm-hmm. uh, because it starts because you look at the. I'm not going to say every priest, but the ones that I know, they're very spiritual. Mm-hmm. Um, I look for the people who are spiritual, sure. and and I don't I don't put expectations on people, and that's the problem because every time I put expectations on people, I will be disappointed always. Sure, and, and obviously there there's many cases where you can look at you know various churches, you know the Catholic Church being probably one of the more well known for mm-hmm. having just you know there, there's of course wonderful priests within in the Catholic Church, but there have been there some that are literally, you know, the incarnation of demons when you, you look at, exactly. at what some have done. And it's easy to understand and say why a family or, or individual will go, I, I'm i not about this and, and completely turn away from it all as a whole because of some That's of the right. insane dark, horrible things that some of these people have done and in mass, and then the amount of cover-up is, is, oh my God, it, it's just uh, just shocking. I just watched a, a Netflix uh, docu-series about, I forget the title of it, but it was about uh, a nun and, and her trying to protect and, and, and get some children away from some of these horrible things some of these priests were doing. And it was just, I mean, you know, I've heard the stories growing up. I've, I've, I've just read the news stories, all of that. And just in the graphic detail, it's just like, oh my God. But it, it's, uh, you know, obviously that's not all of them as there, there's, there's that's evil, true. there's evil in everything. And there's, there's good in, in, in things too, but it's a matter of trying And you to, don't throw out the whole bunch no. of grapes because of one rotten grape. Exactly. And I, I completely agree with that. When it comes to, to, to demonology, when it comes to battling demons, when, when you have, uh, you know, the person who's calling up saying, I think there's something going on here. You discover there is something demonic going on in a home or it's it's affecting an individual. Does that individual need to subscribe or be part of a certain belief system in order to effectively battle off whatever that demon is? Do they have to have some basis of a belief system for for, for anything to be effective? Or or do the demons not really care uh, what what one subscribes to in terms of, of a belief system? And I'm not saying religion is an organized system, but just uh, spirituality, having some sort of spirituality or some sort of belief system there. Uh, many are, uh, they do have a sense of... Uh, spiritual awakening or that that there is dimensions on the other side <laughs> excuse me sure. uh there are there are um most of the time and i i hate to say that because i don't want anybody to become angry at what i say and of course people might have some different opinions but from my experience the majority of the people that become possessed they have invited the entity in 
they have invited uh, when they have a demonic presence or an infestation because you have three types of uh, demonic uses for possession and the first start is the first part is infestation the second is oppression and then then the next is possession and what happens with a lot of people they're playing with uh, Ouija boards uh, they are, and I want to talk more about the Ouija boards and a lot of the games that influence children. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and it's, and it's, this is a big problem now. And I'm starting to see that, uh, my, um, Melody, who is, uh, is my partner in the paranormal investigation. She also is a teacher's aide and she's seeing what these kids are doing during this COVID crisis on their computers. Um, playing these games in between on breaks, and uh, they're horrible. But anyhow, to get back to um, the people who are affected by the demonic, when I go in there, you a lot of times they lie to me, and, it, and I have to weasel the truth. And sometimes Melody, if it's another woman uh, that is uh, asking for help, I'll have Melody, Melody will ask questions. And I will listen and won't sing anything. And um, majority of the time, we have to weasel the truth out. And a lot, a majority of the time that I'm hearing is people who are psychics, who are practicing to become a psychic. There are people who are um, playing with occult tools, uh, like the Ouija board, um, tarot cards, uh, doing uh, the pendulum things like that, um, or making devices to communicate with the dead, or um, ghost mirroring, they do that as well. That's another form. Um, And then what happens in a lot of people that I'm seeing is a lot of Wiccans are coming to me uh, because they dabble with the good, but they also dabble with the bad. So every time they put a spell out, it isn't God that's carrying out that spell. It isn't anything good that's using that's carrying out that spell. It is a demonic entity that's carrying that spell. And then they come back to the person who cast that spell and say, hey, you better pay up. And this is what I've been seeing. And they've been calling me and saying, hey, I got this problem. So what I do ask them, if I'm going to help them, I ask you have to quit what you're doing. Okay, you have to quit what you're doing. So when I go in there, they can see that because I, I, me and Melody, we go into prayer. We go into prayer. It's almost like having a little church in the place. And um, we go in and we do our protection. And they see when I start doing my prayers and I bring out the holy water and I put religious items all around and I see if I can get a reaction. And usually if there's a demonic entity and not a pissed off Casper, if there's a pissed off Casper, they're not going to react to religious items. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it. But it's when it comes to demonic, they don't want anything. That's like taking a positive, like I said before, with a battery, a a good example. You take the positive lead and the negative lead on the battery and you connect them, you're going to get a boom spark and you're going to get a reaction. Well, it's the same thing. When I go into demonic uh, place, um, I can tell. Uh, I'll go, my body will react to it. And, and everybody that has been in, in a demonic situation, they'll, their bodies will be in a cold sweat. They'll know that entity's there. And it's horrible. It's terrifying for that individual or the family. Um, a lot of bad th- things happen. Uh, three o'clock when um, activity acts up big time, that is, uh, you know, mm-hmm. Uh, that's a good sign. The stench, the sulfur stench, or the rotten, vile stench. That's an, uh, if we can't find any dead animals or rodents, that's a good sign. But it usually winds up in one spot and then moves. That's the smell. Um, heavy objects being thrown, and I'm not talking about a piece of paper. Uh, these things. So when we go in there, uh, we do our prayers and I actually do these prayers from my heart and I go in room to room and I cast these things out with the window open and I push it like I'm sweeping with the incense and uh, the uh, holy water I'm sprinkling as I'm going along and 
uh, Melody is reciting prayer and sometimes her own personal prayers as she's working with me. And we force this out. And sometimes it can take hours. Sometimes it, I have to come back and keep doing it until I drive it crazy enough and finally I have power over this entity. You know, it's God working through us. It's not me as me, Peter James Dowling, demonologist, paranormal investigator doing this. It's something that works through me. Mm-hmm. And when this happens, and I've had some successful, I haven't had a bad one yet, but I've had successful cleansings. And people, from my experience, uh, people that I have worked with see that there's something there, and then they want to apply it to their life. So it's basically um, they're hurting bad enough that they're willing to do anything. But unfortunately, there are times where I had to turn away people and say, I'm sorry, I can't help you because you won't get rid of those Ouija bars. You won't get rid of the pendulum because there is, an, there is a big attachment to what they've been doing. They've been so used to uh, being a Wiccan and using crystals and stones and, and pendulums and doing psychic greetings and what have you. They've been so accustomed to it. It's like a bad habit. They can't stop doing it. Mm-hmm. All right. And, so, and, and unfortunately, okay, their intentions and their hearts are really good. Okay. They want to help people. They have a good heart, but that invites things in. And they have no control of it. And the deception is that they believe they have control. They, they can close the tarot cards. They can close this. They can close that. Or they can. Uh, do this safely. Um, That's their deception to make you believe that you are in control. In actuality, you're not in control. And this is from my experiences of going to demonic places that I'm getting feedback from people. Now, we're not talking about a pissed off Casper or we're not talking about a regular uh, spirit entity or residual or intelligent um, that's just haunting a home or a cemetery. We're talking about the demonic, and this is this is uh, from what I've gone through, and um, I can't help people if they're not willing to change. Sure, well, and you got to hurt bad. You know, yeah. they're like everything. When we hurt, when we hurt bad enough, Tony, we change. That wraps up the first part of our conversation with Peter James Dowling about demonic control. In part two of our conversation, how exactly does Peter believe demonic culture and entities lure children to them? Are the demonic ever the cause of death for the living, yet other reasons are given by the living? If someone makes a bargain or in one would call selling their soul to the devil, is there ever a way to reverse that deal? Could someone who is an extreme narcissist be under oppression or control of a demon, allowing them to exhibit such twisted behavior? And has there ever been an exorcism where the exorcist is forced to give up because the entity is too powerful to battle? All of that and more in the second half of our conversation. To hear it, be a supporter of our show. That's what we call a gravekeeper. You sign up at patreon.com slash the grave talks or go directly to our website, thegravetalks.com and click become a gravekeeper. Five dollars a month keeps us on the air and gets you advanced access to all of our episodes in their entirety, our entire back catalog of episodes, and also exclusive bonuses as well throughout the year. Sign up, patreon.com slash thegravetalks, or simply go to thegravetalks.com and click become a gravekeeper. Until next time for The Grave Talks, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening.